Well, Bobby says he's terrified his son Randall could kill him before he kills Krista. He says he's not sure what to do next because he knows you just can't live in a hotel room forever. Now, joining us is Dr. Charles Sophie. Now, Dr. Sophie is on the Dr. Phil Advisory Board. He's board certified in three clinical specialties, adult psychiatry and child and adolescent psychiatry and family practice, as well as being the medical director for the Department of Child and Family Services here in Los Angeles, which by the way is the largest agency in the country. Dr. Sophie, we've been talking about this case and you and I have been studying this in depth and at length and have talked about it numerous times. What I've said to this couple is I believe there's more going on here than reactive attachment disorder. And in fact, that may not be what's going on at all, but if it is, there's certainly more going on than that. What do you think? Absolutely, I, I fully agree. We've discussed it a lot. There's a lot of insults that this child has had, from genetic insults to environmental insults. We don't know what kind of bonding happened, didn't happen during that initial time, zero to nine months, is a critical time. And remember, our brains are growing through all of this, and so his brain is reacting to the deprivation, to the screaming, to the lack of food, to the scabies, to being left there. Yeah. All that kind of stuff impacts the way that your brain grows. So if your brain isn't gonna grow and map the way it needs to, and your neurons don't hook up the way they need to, then your brain doesn't work the way it should, and then you don't react to situations outside the way that you would. And that's why we see him so extreme. And that's both psychological and neurological, Correct. right? Because uh, there, there are certain developmental benchmarks a child is supposed to hit. And if a child is not touched, not held, not nurtured at certain points along the way, then they fail to develop certain abilities and certain relationships. Right. Dr. <clears throat> Sophie, can you show, sure. you brought some illustrations to show just that. Can we explain what we have here? On the left hand side, we have a normal brain of a child. It's a, an MRI. And we see that the structures are well nourished. They're, they're fed with the blood that they need. Then they grow. It's a plant <clears throat> that waters well. On, the, on this side, we see extreme neglect. This is the brain of a child who's been neglected, not fed, not hugged, not told they love, they, not, they don't hear positive sounds, there's all that kind of stuff. And these are the effects that it has on the blood supply to your brain, which then doesn't grow. Okay, now, and I don't want everybody's eyes to gloss over with a bunch of detail you don't right. need to know, but what we're talking about here in these dark areas, these are areas that should be nourished and should be lit up. I'm suggesting that if we looked at your son's brain, it would likely look much more like this than right. it does like this. And so if, if that happens, that means he's looking at the world through a filter that causes him to see something very different than a child his age that has not been through what he has been through looks at. Now, what happens when you start to nurture this child? What happens to their brain when they start to accumulate touch and care and attention and love? You will see that the blood supply starts to fill in the brain and the brain starts to grow and it's like a plant that hasn't been watered but is wilting and now all of a sudden it's starting to stand up and it's starting to grow. Yes. So you know, keep, that's an accumulation that's of a hugs. Hug. That's a hug. Then another one. That's a, I love you today. Yeah. Then That's I one. feed you on time every day. Yeah. Then you just keep going, and when you, you start adding, uh, you can predict your future. You get food right. every day. You get love right. every day. You can Consistent. predict the outcome of your environment. Right. Then it begins, the, the brain starts to respond. Right. And then you get the part of your brain that controls your emotional responses to the world fed, grown, and it gets as close as it can to normal, and then you get normal responses. 